Okay, we're going to get started on the technical assistance webinar. My name is Charlotte Tuttle, and I am the national program leader for the Agricultural Economics and Rural Communities Program under AFRI within NIFA. Next slide, please. Um, so just some meeting logistics. This will be recorded. So be sure that your microphone is muted. We have a Zoom tech support number. So that's 1-888-799-0125, option two. If you have questions, um, instead of typing in the chat box, type in the Q&A, because the Q&A allows us to post the questions and answers um, afterwards. And then finally, the slides and the recording from this webinar will be posted to um, our program website, AERC. Next slide. So we have our USDA non-discrimination statements in accordance with federal civil rights law and the USDA civil rights regulations and policies, the USDA, its agencies, offices, and employees and institutions participating in, um, sorry, Participating in or administering USDA programs are prohibited from discriminating based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, gender identity, including gender expression, sexual orientation, disability, age, marital, marital status, family, parental status, income derived from a public assistance program, political beliefs, or reprisal or retaliation for prior civil rights activity in any program or activity conducted or funded by the USDA. Um, remedies and complaint filing deadlines vary by program or incident. So for more information on this, you can visit this statement, usda.gov slash non-discrimination statement. Next slide. So um, within the AERC, we have five programs. And what I'm going to do is go through um, each program under AERC and just letting you know which NPL is in charge. And we have one NPL here to discuss it. For my programs, I have A1641, Economics, Markets, and Trade, A1642, Social Implications of Emerging Technologies, and A1651, Environment and Natural Resource Economics. So I am the national program leader, and this is my contact information. Lynn is a program specialist for 1641 and 1642. And Desiree Rucker is the program specialist for 1651. Next slide. For small and mid-sized farms, A1601, Dennis Abodage is the national program leader and Tiffany Woodson is the program specialist. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Shala. This is Dennis Abodage. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, this is Dennis Tebodage. I'm the national program leader for the small and medium sized farms. I'm Ms. Tiffany Wilson, is the program specialist. And with small and mid sized farms, we are looking at the gross cash farm income of 350000 or less. And then for medium size, between 350,000 and close to 1 million for medium size farms. Now, uh, back to you, Charlotte. Thanks, Dennis. Okay, next slide, Lynn. And then finally, we have A1661 Rural Community Development, and that's Dr. Keith Harris. Um, he is the national program leader. He cannot attend today. Um, so I will be discussing his program and his program specialist is Jessica Turner. Okay, next slide. So topics we will cover. Um, I will go through uh, what NIFA is. We'll talk about the different programs. We'll discuss the request for applications um, and how proposals are evaluated. And then finally, any additional information or resources. Next slide. So NIFA overview. So NIFA is the extramural science funding agency within the USDA's research, education, and economics mission area. 
So the purpose of NIFA is to invest in and support initiatives that ensure the long-term viability of agriculture. We provide funding and strategic leadership for programs that ensure groundbreaking discoveries in agriculture-related sciences and technologies, um, and we reach people who can put them into practice. Next slide. So here are a number of topics covered by NIFA. Generally, any sort of agriculture topic is covered. We have advanced technologies, animals, including animal health and production, as well as aquaculture. We have business and the economy. So my program, Markets and Trade, Natural Resource Economics, and we also have small business, uh, small business program, natural resources, education, the environment, including climate change, ecosystems, invasive pests and diseases. Of course, we talk about farming and ranching, human sciences, including rural uh, family well-being. Um, and 4-H, food science, including food safety, food and nutrition security, um, international topics, including uh, global food security and international trade, and finally plants, um, and this includes crop production, pest management, plant breeding, and plant health. Next slide. So program overview, AERC. So AERC is Agricultural Economics in Rural Communities, and this is under the AFRI program, okay? And AFRI is the largest competitive program within NIFA, within the USDA. So the purpose of the Agricultural and Economics um, program is to support rigorous economic and social science research that informs decision-making, policy design, and implementation to enhance the sustainability of ag production systems and natural resources, as well as promote rural economic development and prosperity, enhance the quality of life, and alleviate poverty. So we have a number of topics covered in AERC. This includes ag markets, social implications of new technologies, commodity policy, market structure, interactions between agriculture and the environment, rural economic development and well-being, food and nutrition security, and consumer preferences. Next slide. These. Thank you. So to be eligible to apply for an AFRI award um, through AERC, uh, there are a number of different um, institutions you can belong to. A state agricultural experiment station, colleges and universities, including junior colleges offering associate's degree or higher, university research foundations, as well as other research institutions and organizations. Some federal agencies are eligible. Um, national laboratories, private organizations and corporations, including nonprofits, and finally, individuals who are U.S. citizens, nationals, or permanent residents. Next slide. So we offer a number of different project and grant types. So under project types, we have strict research, education, and extension, and we have integrated projects as well. So generally you'll see in the RFA, either the um, project type is research only, which is how most of my programs are, or research or integrated, which means it can either be research only or research and extension or research and education. We also have a number of different grant types. These include a standard grant, the strengthening grant, which um, is what we call phase. So if you are a small to mid-sized institution, a minority serving institution, or your institution resides in an EPSCOR state, um, you qualify for a strengthening grant. You can qualify for a new investigator grant if you are within five years of starting your professional career. And then finally, we have conference grant types. Next slide. So a little bit about conferences um, that I wanted to give you some um, quick information. There is no deadline with the conference grant. So you'll see, we'll refer to a number of deadlines throughout this presentation, but for conferences, you can submit your conference grant anytime as long as it is submitted 195 days before the proposed conference start date. 
And once you submit that LOI to me, and I let you know that, yes, this falls within um, economics, markets, and trade, or environment um, and natural resource economics, then you must submit your proposal to grants.gov 150 days before the proposed conference start date. Okay, so the due date listed in the RFA does not apply to conference grant applications. Next slide. Um, so here's just a quick table to let you know what kind of um, project types each program has. For Dennis's program, rural and mid-sized farms, it can be research or integrated. Economics, markets, and trade is research only. Social implications of emerging technology is research or integrated. Environment and natural resource economics, the RFA states research or integrated. Generally, it is research only though. Um, and finally, rural economic development is research or integrated. Next slide. Um, so cost sharing or matching. I received an email uh, with this question a lot because the um, I think the language may have confused some folks within the RFA, at least last year. Rarely is um, matching required. It's only required if it is commodity specific and not of national scope. The majority of research and proposals submitted to AFRI and to AERC are to a certain extent of national scope, even if they're commodity specific, okay? Matching is waived if the results are of the project, um, while of particular benefit to a specific agricultural commodity are likely to be applicable to agricultural commodities or the project involves a minority commodity. But generally, you don't have to worry about matching. You can reach out to me or Dennis or Keith to confirm if you have a question. Next slide. Okay, application details. So this, uh, I'm gonna turn this over to Dennis to discuss his program. Yeah, thank you, Charlotte. Within the small and medium-sized farms, as I shared earlier, you are looking at gross cash farm income of 350,000 or less for small, and then under 1 million, and uh, before 350,000 uh, for medium size. These are the priorities of the program. Now, the priorities are listed here. Post-harvest handling, farm entry opportunities, land tenure, hair property, uh, processing of fresh fruits and vegetables, strategies to manage and sustain timberland, local and regional food systems, market access, and uh, developing new tools that are scalable for small and medium-sized farms. Now, any type of uh, priority or initiative within your state, region that are not in here, and you give a good um, rationale, those ones you can submit. So you don't have to go with this strictly when you submit a proposal to our program area. Next slide, please. So the application deadline this year is on August 17. And uh, please uh, read the application. And if you have any questions, uh, please reach out to me. Maximum funding is 650,000. And uh, proposals per institution, no restriction. Awards per institution, no restriction. Nonprofits can apply to this effort. Now, when nonprofits apply, they have to be research only. Only land grants can apply for research only or integrated, which is research, education, and extension, or research and education, or research and extension. Thanks, Dennis. Yeah, you're welcome. We can go to the next slide. So the next program is Economics, Markets, and Trade, A1641. Um, 
So the purpose of economics, markets, and trade is to support research on development of theories, methods, and applications of agricultural economics. So when I talk about A1641, I say that this is the general ag econ program. Um, so topics include agricultural market structure, competitiveness and in international trade, ag production and resource use, consumer behavior, food retail and federal nutrition programs, farm labor and immigration policy, um, agricultural policy de design and technological development. Next slide. So you can see the RFA um, if you just go onto the NIFA website. Our application deadline is October 5th of this year, 5 p.m. Eastern time. We can't accept applications beyond this deadline. So please be sure to submit by 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, and for next year, it's October 3rd. So the total amount that we generally um, are appropriated is 12 million. Um, again, our program code is A1651. Like Dennis's program, the maximum funding award is $650,000 per project generally for a period of three to five years. Now it's important to note that you can receive an additional $150,000 for projects that are partnering with minority serving institutions, small to mid-sized institutions, um, international institutions or institutions that are in EPSCOR states. Now what happens with this 150 is that if you're partnering with this institution, the institution receives $150,000. OK, um, and remember, it uh, in order to qualify, not only must you meet the um, requirements of minority serving small to mid-sized or F score, you also can't be one of the top 100 most successful universities at receiving federal funding. Next slide. The next program is A1642, Social Implications of Emerging Technologies. So the purpose of this program is to examine the economic and social implications of de technology um, because often with new technology, we anticipate unforeseen or unintended consequences. And we wanna know what are the implications from a cultural, health, welfare, equity, and ethical standpoint. Um, so this is not a strict economics program. This is meant to be interdisciplinary. Um, some uh, topics include application of gene editing and gene drives, application of nanotechnology in agriculture, analysis of big data, um, or implementation of autonomous technologies and systems within agricultural production, food manage manufacturing, or supply chains. Next slide. So again, you can uh, read the language, the specific language. Our due date for this program is November 2nd of this year and October 31st of next year. It's important to know the program code, A1642. And like the previous program, maximum award is $650,000. You can have an additional $150,000 if you partner with minority serving institution, small to mid-sized institution, or an app score or international institution. Next slide. Um, A1651 is environment and natural resources. So the purpose of this is advancing economic theory, tools, and analysis and ecosystem valuation, non-market benefit valuation, conservation policy, and general economics of climate change. Um, next slide. So again, um, the application deadline for this one is actually coming up sooner than the other ones. It's September 14th of this year and 12th of next year. Uh, maximum funding is $650,000. If you partner with one of the institutions I mentioned prior, um, you can get an extra uh, $150,000. Next slide. And then we have A1661, which is Rural Community Development. So this is Keith Harris's program. And the purpose of this program is to support rigorous theoretical and empirical efforts to create and examine innovative approaches 
for advancing economic opportunities for rural entrepreneurs and communities in order to promote rural prosperity and well being. Um, so, some topics include uh, strategies for economic growth in regions of persistent extreme poverty that can directly or indirectly impact public health crises, including COVID 19, opioid abuse, and suicide. Um, look at private and public returns to expanding broadband. Um, look at placemaking assets like cultural amenities, performing arts, um, aesthetic character of rural communities. Next slide. Um, so the application deadline for this one is September 14th. You can have a maximum award of $650,000. And if you want more information on this, you can contact Keith Harris. Next slide. Um, so we also have three cross-cutting programs. We have Extension Education and USDA Climate Hubs Partnership. So this is cross-cutting in that it involves a number of different institutes in NIFA. So this is working with regional climate hubs. Um, the due date has passed for this year, but the upcoming due date is May 2nd of next year. We also have the Center for Research, Behavioral Economics and Extension on Food Loss and Waste. This is a new program that's um, looking at food loss and waste and mitigation policies. And the due date is September 14th. And then finally, we have interdisciplinary engagement in animal systems, looking at the complex um, research related to animals. And that's October 5th of this year. Next slide. So if you um, decide to apply for a AFRI grant with AERC, we have a number of key components that are necessary for your proposal. This includes the project summary and abstract, project narrative, a bibliography and reference list, data management plan, as well as other documents, including your budget and your budget strategy. Next slide. So it is important to note that your project negative, or sorry, narrative is 18 pages long and no longer. It is strictly enforced. So if you submit a 20 page project narrative, it will not be reviewed. Um, single line spacing 12 point times New Roman font. This includes text figures and tables. Um, within the 18 pages, you must describe um, the impact on research, training infrastructure or extension to achieve the goals of the project. Um, cooperation and institutional involvement, and also the project timeline. Next slide. Um, for the data management plan, investigators must provide detailed, as in up to two pages, business and management plans, including the data type, data format, storage and preservation, data sharing, protection and public access and roles and responsibilities. And for more information on the data management plan, I encourage you to visit this website. Under NIFA, you can go to resource data management plan and uh, it'll give you a detail of how you can compose this. Next slide. Um, for your submission, NIFA only accepts electronic submissions of applications, so you cannot mail it to me. Um, it also must be in a PDF format. We do not accept um, proposals in Word. Grants.gov may allow other formats, but NIFA does not. So only submit as a PDF and don't use third-party PDF filters. Next slide. So you submit your proposal, then we have this evaluation process. Um, so generally we receive these proposals on the due date. Um, the national program leader and the program manager assign proposals to different panelists within our panel. And usually each proposal goes to three to four reviewers with expertise in the proposed topic. Um, so how it works is we may find one or two with specific expertise of your proposal, but we may also 
um, have a reviewer who isn't specifically um, an expert in that topic review your proposal. So it's important to make the proposal accessible to any economist who reads your proposal, not just to those who understand um, the language and literature of your specific topic. So um, after we provide the proposals to the reviewers, we give them um, usually four to six weeks to review. And while they review, they produce individual reviews of each proposal and evaluate its strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so they submit these written reviews into our system. And we use these written reviews to begin the panel discussion. So after they submit their, their reviews, we then hold a panel usually the following week and we go through each proposal and the four reviewers who, who review each proposal will start discussing the proposal using their written reviews. Um, through these discussions, peer review panelists come to consensus on the final rating and ranking of the proposal. So once they discuss uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the proposal, they will rank it outstanding, high priority, medium priority, low priority, or um, do not fund, which usually means it doesn't fit the program, not that it's a terrible proposal. So after they decide um, the strengths and weaknesses, they, they rank the proposal. Next slide. So how do they evaluate the proposals? Generally, they look at the merit of the application for science, research, education, or extension. Um, reviewers also look at the qualifications of the project personnel, adequacy of facilities, and project management. So they want to see if it is feasible, given the expertise on your team, as well as um, kind of the infrastructure that you have access to. Um, Probably most importantly is the project relevance. Is it relevant to US agriculture or the program pri priorities? So after the application has been assessed for strengths and weaknesses for each criterion, the overall likelihood that the project will have significant um, outcome and impact is evaluated. So we do wanna see novel research that will have impact. Uh, next slide. So, What's the timeline? So we request or we release our request for applications, our RFAs, and we have a due date. So for most of um, the AERC programs, it's September or October. So leading up to this, certainly if you are planning on applying to 1661 or 1651, you're likely working on your proposal right now. Um, you submit your proposal and um, once it is submitted, we look at the topics and the panel manager and the national program leader um, distribute to the reviewers. We hold the panel, um, decide on the panel just ranks the proposals and um, given how much funding we have, we determine who and how many we are able to fund. Um, so basically after two to three months, after the peer review process, we are able to notify you if you have received a NIFA grant. After we notify you, so usually um, if it's due October 6th, hope, hopefully we can notify you if the RFA or the proposals are due October 6th, hopefully we can notify you by the end of December. Then it usually takes awards one to two months to finalize all the paperwork in order for you to get your award. Um, so on average, a competitive program takes about three to five months from the proposal due date to an award being made to an institution. Next slide. So additional information. So if you want to see what has been funded by certain programs, you can use this CRIS website and that's okay. You can go to the next website. There's um, at the bottom, you can see um, links for each program for 1641, 1651, 1642. And actually you can include, um, 
here you can see GC equals A1601. Put in the code for whichever program you are interested in. And this will provide you titles and abstracts of the projects that we have funded. Next slide. Um, there are upcoming events with NIFA, including um, a number of technical assistance webinars beyond AERC. So if you go to NIFA.USDA, Dot gov slash events, you can see any other technical assistance webinars that you may be interested in. And then you can also look at the upcoming RFA calendar to let you know when the next RFA will be released. Next slide. Um, for any other questions you have, of course, you can always reach out to me or Dennis or Keith for any information. But we also have a number of really